Days Gone will be a really big open world game as we discussed in my previous video but now we learned that the game will have DLC as well. The photo mode is also at launch it seems and there's way more to discuss regarding the hordes. And also I want to touch on special rewards that you get for playing the different storylines in the game and way more so let's get into it. If you enjoyed that then a like of course would be super appreciated and let's go. As always I want to remind you that I'm running a giveaway for the Days Gone Digital Deluxe Edition of the game with the pre-order bonuses that you see right here. Just follow the link in description down below or in the pinned comment for a chance to win and also be sure that you are subscribed to the channel before you enter. Now let's continue with the news because in an interview with Gamer Braves, David Lee, the community manager on Days Gone, confirmed that they have unannounced the DLC in the works for the game but would not really like go into details as to what that might be. The main story should also explain more about the background of the main cast of the game but while we only play Deacon in the main game, it could be like a side story that we play with another character, like I can totally see that happen. It's also something that PlayStation exclusives from first party studios have done before, like with Infamous First Light. Here we controlled Fetch, who we met during the main story of Infamous Second Son. And you could count Uncharted The Lost Legacy as well, that was first DLC for Uncharted 4, but then of course spinned into its own game. Most of the PlayStation exclusives this generation had one big expansion after launch. Horizon for example got the Frozen Wilds, I already mentioned Uncharted and Infamous Second Son, Spider-Man with the City That Never Sleeps that was basically one like big story turned into three episodes. God of War is kind of the big outlier here, I guess you could say Detroit Become Human as well, although Quantic Dream Games and DLC did not really happen before. But it's cool to hear that Days Gone will bring more content to the game after launch. And I by the way asked about DLC as well during my interview with one of the developers at a recent hands-on event. And here it was noted that it was not the time for us to discuss about it yet but that they might have some content after launch. And if they had anything to share, they would let us know. So I kind of got the feeling that David was a little too excited with sharing us the DLC info. But I'm happy that he confirmed it, because I kind of like knowing that a game will be supported after launch before I start playing, so you always know that you will be able to spend more time with the game after you finished it. Some games already have the feature at launch, but others like added post-launch, like God of War, the photo mode. And I can confirm that this was already present in the Days Gone build that I played and while there's no footage of it yet, Push Square already toyed around with this mode and noted that it looked really really solid. You got like your usual options, so moving the camera around the character, hide your character, your bike, you can hide other characters as well, set the focus, use different border options like frames around your shots. Push Square saw filters there like a black and white one, so it seems to be a pretty feature rich mode that will likely be available when the game launches on April 26th. So you can already use it when playing through the game, but also of course after you finish the game you can stay in the world for longer and take some really beautiful shots. And yes, we discussed in my recent video that finishing the main story cost around the 30 hours according to the developers, and then you did not touch some of the side mission stuff as well. In an interview with the German Games.ch, the creative director shared more about the hordes and a really cool sounding storyline that opens up near the end of the game called Horde Killer. And for this storyline you have to clear out all the hordes in the world. And in the interview the creative director once again notes that there are 40 of these insane large group of enemies in the game. And according to the community manager they start at like 50 enemies in one group and could go up to 500 or even 600. And what is interesting is that they all have free places where they will go to. During day they mostly stay in dark places, I showed you this cave footage already, but then they will like migrate and drink. So go to water holes, so that's like the second place they go to. And after that they will migrate to their feeding grounds, the corp dumping places. So you really have free places to take them on, or maybe you encounter them while they like move from place to place as well. The creative director notes that if they see a deer for example, they will go and chase that because they eat that too. Although their focus will of course be mostly on you. And remember that E3 2016 gameplay footage, the first gameplay that we saw of Days Gone. Well this mission and this location are still in the main game. So this seems to be one of the only times that you have to kill hundreds of freakers before you can move on with the story. 
So after that, you can likely choose to go and take out the 39 other hordes for this horde killer and game storyline. But interesting to note is that if you defeat them, they will be gone. They will not respawn. So kind of like other end game activities like the elephants in Assassin's Creed Origins, for example. When you kill them, they will be gone from the game. And that obviously makes sense and that gives you the sense of progression. But I do hope that in the end, they add a sort of replayability or respawn feature to the game. Because otherwise you will hit a point where you got like a really cool weapon or just want to play more Days Gone and fight a horde. And then they are nowhere to be seen. So... Hopefully they kind of think about that. I told you in my recent video that there will always be enemies to fight. So there will always be danger in the world. But of course the hordes are the coolest part of the game. So it will still kind of feel empty I guess if they are nowhere to be seen. And you will very likely get a really cool weapon or other cool reward for completing the horde killer storyline. So you will then not be able to use that on any hordes in the game. Because that is the thing and something that I sadly cannot show you in the footage. But these storylines have special rewards that you get after reaching a certain point. And during my recent play session I already like wrote down all the rewards that I could see for the active storylines that I could play in this demo build. We for example see here the ambush camp hunter and the infestation exterminator storylines that are all about clearing things in the world. Clearing for example in this case a ripper ambush camp gives you percentages towards the ambush camp hunter storyline. So you know how many times you likely have to clear a camp before you get a certain reward. I did not discover the Ripper ambush camps yet, so that's why I did not have that storyline. But it did go to one of the Marauder camps, so with more humanoid enemies, that gave me the Marauder camp hunter storyline. Track ambushers back to their camp and take them out. Completing this storyline by 100%, so likely clearing all the Marauder camps over the map. Reward you with the so-called Rock Chuck weapon, likely referring to a large sniper used to kill Rock Chuck animals, as you see right here in one of these Google images. But of course, if you think it's something else, then let me know in the comments down below. So likely one of the best weapons in the game that you can only get at the end of the game, because you obviously need to have access to all the regions first, before you can like clear all these camps in the game. So while I did not have a storyline that told me to clear all the Camps, I did have a storyline that asked me to learn more about their rest in peace cult because that is the thing they believe that the outbreak was a sign of God and they now cut and burn themselves to be more like the Freakers while they are still human. You will only mostly find them in selected areas like their own camps and we haven't really seen a lot of enemy types of this faction yet, just your random regular guy. But they should have a lot of unique variations as well that we haven't seen yet according to the community manager. So I'm curious to encounter them for sure. So learning more about this cult, following their missions will get you to complete the storyline and if you are at 79% then you get the Ripper X craft recipe so you can make likely a very strong melee weapon in the game. And the community manager David also talked about the axes that they are like the strongest melee weapons that can kill enemies in a few hits but they also break really really fast so that's why you get a recipe instead of just a weapon so you can also recraft it if you have the resources. You can by the way also repair weapons if you unlock the field repair skill and then use the scrap that you find in the world to fix them up. I also saw the he's my brother storyline that is about Boozer your friend and completing that to 49% gets you his shotgun. So to complete this you have to help him because in the opening hour of the game as you see here in footage from Game Informer that they put up in May 2018 Boozer will get attacked by the Rippers who try to mark him to make him become one of them. You luckily save him from them and then take Booster to your hideout where he will need to rest on his bed. So in this storyline you will have to help him recover by getting medical supplies from a nearby neuro checkpoint for example. And this was all already shown in the Game Informer footage from last year. And here you also see them use Booster shotgun because in the opening hour of the game you namely borrow this from him to take out some freakers in the tunnel but then later to save him from the rippers as well. And here you see that it's a rank 3 shotgun and the highest rank in Days Gone is rank 5. So that's a pretty nice gun to have that Boozer is by the way really attached to as he sleeps with it as well in the early part of the game. But yeah, very interesting to know that we will get this unique shotgun if we help Boozer out. Not all these storylines give a special reward though, as far as I've seen. The I Remember storyline about Deacon's wife with the events before the outbreak did not have a reward in the storyline menu. 
But yeah, this will be one of the main storylines that you have to do anyways. But overall, it's cool to see that most of the side contents will get you a special reward after you hit a certain percentage in the storyline section. Like this very powerful sniper rival. So then you might want to like focus on this activity even more like... Oh, I want to complete all the Marauder camps because I want to get this weapon. It's stuff like this that gets me even more excited to play as I love to see an interesting progression system that really makes you want to focus on different things or kind of focus on everything to get all the special rewards. Like that you know that you are working towards something awesome. April 26th really can't come soon enough. Of course, subscribe for way more Days Gone content. I will keep you up to date on all the recent news. And of course, I got more videos like planned following my recent play session with the skills and other things that are worth discussing. So keep an eye out for that. Like the video to support the channel. Check out that giveaway if you haven't already in the description down below or in the pinned comments. And I got other Days Gone videos up on the channel as well. Like for example, one video on the world and how big it really is. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.